When Apollo 13 thundered to life in an eruption of fire at liftoff, no one knew its crew would need a miracle to make it back home from the moon. 55 hours into the mission, two oxygen tanks exploded, ripping a hole in the side of the rocket, crippling the spacecraft. Unless NASA found a solution to a problem it had never even imagined, the crew would die in space. Apollo 13 is an outstanding case study on the power of an optimistic outlook. The spacecraft was 200,000 miles from home when one engine quit and they began running out of air. Jim Lovell radioed Mission Control and said these now famous words, Houston, we have a problem. This unthinkable explosion hadn't entered into the planning of Mission Control. This emergency called for more than just the right scientific answers from space age technology. The optimistic outlook of everyone involved is what became the real story behind the rescue mission. Back at Mission Control, Flight Director Gene Krantz told his team that he didn't care about the odds or that they had never encountered this problem before. He said they had to believe that the crew was coming home and that failure was not an option. That's the power of outlook. It's our choice whether we have an optimistic or a pessimistic outlook. The Bible says that as a man thinks, so he is. We can choose the way we view life, and the way we view life directly impacts our health and quality of life. Every thought either pulls us toward God or away from God. The good news is we can learn to be positive, and when we do, life improves immediately. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to get all the breaks? Why she got the promotion or he got the raise? Why life seems to hand some people their dreams on a silver platter? Think about the kids you went to high school with. We all know someone in our class who really surprised us. You know, the kid who seemed to have all the brains but somehow didn't achieve much of anything significant. But then on the other hand, there's the classmate whose success amazes everyone at the class reunion. Though their lives appeared very average in high school, everything just seemed to go their way. Success or happiness is not a matter of good or bad luck. It happens by design. Successful people see life differently. They live with an optimistic outlook. It is important to understand the benefits of optimism because Research has revealed that optimism plays a significant role in our overall health, from different rates of cancer to overall immune function. Dr. Seligman in his book, Learned Optimism, summarizes his many studies on optimism and pessimism by stating that compared to an individual's talent test scores, pessimists end up performing below the potential indicated by their test score results, and optimists are more successful than their scores would indicate they should. He says that the notion of potential without the notion of optimism has very little meaning. By simply choosing an optimistic outlook, we tend to increase our chances for success. That's such an important point. Let me say that again. By choosing an optimistic outlook, we increase our chances for success. Our outlook becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. People who practice the learned habit of maintaining an optimistic outlook approach life differently. To them, destiny isn't a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. It doesn't matter if you have natural talents and potential, you must reinforce it with positive belief and action. Pessimists often limit their progress toward goals because they don't believe they really have much control over their lives or destiny. They view problems as insurmountable. Pessimists tend to believe the good things that happen to them are just random luck, but take personal responsibility for the bad things that happen to them. People who are optimistic stay in the game and work to make their life a success they are driven by the deep conviction that their decisions and actions can and will make a difference. They create plans or personal mission statements and manage their actions, adjusting their plans when life throws them an unexpected curve 
keep their attitude positive, always focusing on their goals. It's a process that first begins in the mind. So the next time you find yourselves anxious or worried, pause for a moment and pay attention to what you're saying to yourself. We tend to have automatic internal responses to different situations. When something goes wrong, some people tell themselves that things will be better tomorrow. While pessimists tell themselves, it's just life and there's nothing you can do about it. We need to develop awareness of these automatic responses, especially the negative ones, and then develop new optimistic ways to interpret what is happening in our lives. People with an optimistic outlook see it, believe it, and seize it. Just as a muddy spring can't produce clear, fresh water, it's impossible for a negative attitude to create positive results. The good thing is that optimism can be learned, and it has an incredibly powerful impact on all areas of your life. Having this positive mindset then enables us to envision the possibilities. And when you have a clear vision, you have meaning and purpose in life, as well as a positive outlook for the future. In fact, a person's positive outlook helps their vision become a reality. Their positive outlook becomes fuel for their vision. Let me explain with one of my favorite illustrations the immense power of vision. It's the story of Viktor Frankl, a well-known psychiatrist from Austria, who survived the nightmare of the Auschwitz Nazi concentration camp. He found a golden thread of hope. That golden thread of hope was a vision for the future, something he pictured in his mind worth living for. Frankl realized everything could be taken from him by the Nazis except his attitude. That was the one thing he controlled that could not be taken from him. He had a vision of his future. He didn't let the darkness of his experiences through the Holocaust determine how bright his future could be. Regardless of the horrors he was enduring, he focused on how his life could be after the war. He knew that a person with an optimistic outlook identifies something to live for and takes positive action in their daily journey toward making their vision a reality. This hope makes life worth living. Frankel concludes, it is a peculiarity of man that he can only live by looking to the future. This is his salvation in the most difficult moments of his existence. Another habit we must practice to enjoy a satisfying life is hope. Having hope and a vision inspired sixth graders in an elementary school in Harlem, New York. Eugene Lang, a successful self-made millionaire, had graduated from this school and was invited back to speak at the school's commencement service for the sixth grade 1981 graduating class of 52 students. As he was speaking, he realized that he just wasn't getting through to his audience. He decided to put his notes aside and he began to talk about Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. He told the students that everyone had to have a dream if they wanted their life to go somewhere positive. He emphasized the value of education and going to college, but then realized that most of them probably wouldn't be able to afford it. Mr. Lang then made a snap decision. He said, don't think for a minute that you can't go to college because you can. And he promised to pay the college tuition for every sixth grader who was graduating that day who would go on to graduate from high school. This was the first time many of the students felt hopeful about the future. They began to develop a vision for their life. One student said, I had something to look forward to, something waiting for me. It was a golden feeling. Mr. Lang knew that money alone wasn't the answer. He realized it would take a lot of work, and he helped create a support structure of teachers, counselors, and community who would work with the students to help them accomplish their vision for their lives. School statistics predicted that of the 52 sixth graders graduating that day, only 25% would graduate from high school. And of those 25%, 
almost none would go to college. But because of Mr. Lang's vision and challenge, 48 of the 52 sixth graders graduated from high school and 40 attended college. That's the power of a vision that inspires hope. God has given us the opportunity to choose our future. He has come to us as Eugene Lang came to those sixth graders with his vision that we become happy, healthy, and productive individuals, not only here, but also in the hereafter. He demonstrated just how much he loves us. He not only inspires us with hope of a pleasant future, but also provides us with the support structure necessary for our success. Any of us who are willing to take advantage of his offer can do so. It is a privilege that can't be taken from us. We can ignore it, but it won't be taken away. Our choice shapes our actions and reactions, impacting our destiny. As has often been said, whether we believe we can or we can't, either way, we're right. So why not believe and act in hope? The Bible says in Romans 8, 24, that we are saved by hope. In this text, the word saved is translated from Greek, sozo. It includes the concept of being healed from disease as well. What an interesting concept to be saved and healed by hope. What effect does hope have on health and well-being? The Western Journal of Medicine published a story about a doctor who overheard two oncologists comparing the results they had with their treatment of cancer patients. Both used the same drugs, dosage, and criteria, but one success rate was 22 percent, the other was 74 percent. They each used a drug combination of etoposide, platinol, oncovin, and hydroxyurea, commonly referred to as EPO, E-P-O-H. The oncologist with the 22% success rate told his patients he was giving them EPO, but the oncologist with the 74% success rate told his patients he was giving them HOPE, H-O-P-E, and emphasized how this medicine gave them a good chance for survival. Hope has an incredible effect on how well a patient recovers. Not having hope, hopelessness, has an equally significant impact on a patient's recovery. For the worse, for example, studies show that hopelessness is a strong, independent predictor of cardiovascular disease morbidity and mortality. Hope has an incredible effect on how we live our lives as well. Living without hope, hopelessness has a significant impact on the quality of our lives, both here and into eternity. God has given us strong evidence of His care and vision for us. He has provided us with the support structure and resources we need. Simply believing our situation is hopeful affects the outcome. We can instantly improve our life by being more hopeful. We can enjoy superior results by simply expecting the best and trusting the one who loves us to provide what we need for success. Hopefulness is a gift. Hopefulness is a choice. With practice, hopefulness can become a habit. Regularly expressing your gratitude also helps you have a positive outlook. Gratitude is a key part of a positive outlook. In your mind, start making a list of things for which you are grateful. It can be people or things. I'm thankful for sunshine and fresh air. I'm thankful for my family and the special people I can always count on. I'm thankful for a place to call home. I'm thankful for a knowledge of a God that cares about me as a person, and I'm thankful for His promise to work all things out for good. That promise puts a silver lining on even the darkest cloud. You should count your blessings. It would be good if you wrote down a list to review and add to every day. It will make it easier to choose to have a positive outlook. Counting your blessings will help you develop thankfulness, and gratitude. Each day, tell someone at least one thing you are thankful for. Compliment those around you and tell others you are grateful for them and they make your life better. 
When you do this, both of you will feel happier. In a research project in gratitude, people who regularly listed what they were thankful for experienced higher levels of optimism, alertness, enthusiasm, determination, and energy. Grateful people are more empathetic and are considered more helpful and generous by the people in their social networks. Their social involvement leads to better connection with others, leading to greater satisfaction with life. People with a positive outlook don't deny or ignore negative things in their life, but work through them with a hopeful attitude. Optimists count their blessings. Pessimists count their burdens. Being grateful brings joy to your life, and it helps you realize all the good that's around you. It's as simple as counting your blessings. It'll make a world of difference. It was hope an incredibly positive attitude, and some remarkable vision that eventually brought Apollo 13 back home. You can only imagine the joy and thunderous applause that filled Mission Control. The team had brought the astronauts home alive with their optimistic outlook and positive action. Their determination had accomplished the impossible. They never accepted failure as an option. Add hope to your life and you begin to see things differently. Starting now, we can change how we view the world and experience life. It will become more enjoyable and satisfying the way God intends for us. Here are four habits to begin taking charge of our outlook today. Practice optimism. Focus on the positive. Live with vision. Hope. Find the good in every situation. And express gratitude. Share at least one thing that you're thankful for with someone every day. Remember, opportunity is everywhere. Believe it. See it. Seize it. This is your life, and this is how God wants you to live it. That's Creation Health.